Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the July 23rd River Falls City Council meeting. First thing we'll do is stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Christy, can we have a roll call, please? Here. Downing. Here. Gagne. Here. Morissette. Here. Odin. Here. Page. Here. Okay, next, we have approval of minutes from the July 9th council meeting. I move approval. Thank it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, next, we have approval of the bills with Mr. Morissette. I make a motion. We approve the bills in the amount of $1,000,000. $297,555.22, subject to the comptroller. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next move on to public comments. Uh, is there anybody in the audience has anything like to talk about? Just uh, sign in and state your name. Now you turned us off again. There it goes. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Judy Foster Babcock, and I am here tonight to just give you a quick overview of a new organization in River Falls called the Kinney Corridor Collaborative. I'm a res longtime resident of River Falls and a property owner on the Junction Falls Impoundment, also known as Lake George. So after the co council approved the Kinney Corridor Plan last January, there was a concurrent effort to bring together a group of citizens to consider how to form a supporting entity to work with the public-private partnership that was proposed by the city as part of that work. The partnership uh, concept was interesting and many people came forward to work on it. We studied a variety of partnership models and discovered that the traditional approach to public-private partnerships didn't leave room for the involvement of nonprofits and some of the philanthropies that we thought would be an important part of the quarter plan support. We found through the community conversations that the community really wanted to continue to be involved in the quarter project and to make some investments in it. And so we researched some of that urban planning and placemaking as they call it in the day and age and found that nonprofits and philanthropy entities actually have a place in that because they're willing and wanting to work with the community to make these investments and improve the lives of the citizens and the people that they serve. So we found that getting things done is no longer just a public-private partnership, but actually a model that's called P5, which allows for the involvement of the nonprofit sector and the philanthropic sector, as long with the people, besides public, uh, the public entity that might own the assets or run the utilities, and then the private sector that might come forward with special services or be contracted. So exciting, we had this group of volunteers that met over six, week, six months and they decided on a mission and a vision, which I'll share shortly. But I wanted to take a moment to thank some of those volunteers, some of the people that are in this room or are not in the picture, who participated in that process. I think it was a really a good continuation of the community involvement that we've had. And so I hope that you will support them and say thank you to them if you see them on the street. So that group also researched a number of legal structures and what would be the appropriate entity type. We considered a lot of different models again for that as well, and ultimately decided to form a Wisconsin non-stock, non-profit corporation. And the reason for that is we think that'll be the best vehicle to bring in the philanthropic resources, the nonprofit support, entities that have already been involved will have a channel then to get involved with projects and components of the quarter plan. And we think that there's good governance and lots of oversight of that as the way the laws and regulations are set up. So that group was very busy. You can see our checklist of what we got done between January and July. We have a few steps left to go, but I think the main messages I wanna leave you with is we've got a very active and engaged board. We've begun meeting in mid-June as an official organization. The board has, meeting, has decided to keep their meetings open to the public 
so people are welcome to come and we advertise those on our Facebook page and work with the, the city uh, administrator and others to help make sure that that message gets out. And we're forming the committees that will be doing some of the work in partnership with the city. The Kinney Quarter Collaborative Vision, you can read here, but is essentially derived from the concepts that were captured in the corridor plan and the related community feedback. We definitely want to see a Kinney that's healthy and accessible to everyone to enjoy. And we also want to have a continuing network of partners and public and private involvement with landowners and passionate people engaged in this process. So we don't want it to become something that happens behind closed doors, and I don't think the city wants that either. In short, I'll let you read our mission, but in short, we're basically committing as an organization to bring the money and the people together to help implement the corridor plan. So we want you to know that and uh, get ready to work with us, hopefully, as we uh, work with the city on an MOU that will be brought to the council at a future date for approval. To learn more or to get involved or just to follow along, because we'd love to have 500 Facebook followers in the next 90 days, so help us out with that. Um, check out our website or contact us at you know, in info at kinecc.org. If you have any questions, but otherwise, that's it for me. Thank you from our new board. Anybody have any questions for Judy? No? Thanks, Judy. Appreciate You're welcome. it. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, come on up. Where's the sign? Hi, my name is Greg Peters. I'm the president of the River Falls Baseball Council, and uh, I was just coming here tonight to go over um, just a kind of up, giving an update of our turf project that we that we have out at the at First National Bank of River Falls Field. Um, we uh, we're we're v extremely excited about it. Um, we just to, I, I, some of you may know and some of you may not. We received a grant from Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association. Youth Development Foundation. Uh, the grant was for $850,000, and we received it in um, December, end of December, and we and we receiving um, the payments and you know th three different uh, payment um, cycles. But we're going to take off the which a lot of people are like, no, oh, you get rid of the grass, and it's it's it, you know pretty nostalgic and stuff. But if you if you if you put all the all the positives in one column, the only negative that you have out of it is that it's not grass. But we're going to be able to. Um, we're very excited about it just because we can use it longer. We you know we can start in April, you know, brush the snow off, and you know we can start in even March if they have nice days, and we can use it all the way through first part of snow and you know in October, November. So we we probably had about a, a hundred and twenty-five different games you know out there in the past and. We're, that number's probably going to be around 400 to 500 now, and so we. And then one of the, um, you obviously can't move the bases in the mound and things like that. So we can, we're going to be able to. Um, it's it's a, a, a tur it's a it's a um, movable mound, so we can have eight year olds playing there, ten year olds, twelve year olds. We can take the mound completely off and have um, youth girls fast pitch softball. We're going to have a, um, a challenger league. There's a, a um, the challenger league is for uh, those disabled. Um, handicapped and disabled individuals and have a baseball league out there and, and we'll be able to because it's turf so they can have you know it's wheelchair accessible and things like that uh, we're, we're just we're very excited about all the, the 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 possibilities that will not only bring to the park but also the, the community in general so we um, we're, we're using a um, total excavation in town is gonna is gonna do all the get it ready to be turfed and um, we're using a company called Midwest Turf and Sport to uh, lay the turf, and they actually they were the company that did the Hudson. Uh, we had three different bids, and um, the 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 company that did the high school stuff they were in the process too. They actually were number two, but we ended up going with Midwest Turf and Sport. It was a little bit better deal for us. And uh, there is a place called um, Point of Beginnings did all the you know they're doing the DNR permits and um, stormwater management and things like that. So um, that stuff is. Uh, Pretty much, um, you know, all we're we haven't started yet, obviously, but we're um, we have to sign the lease with the lease agreement with the city, and so I, that's probably why I'm you know here tonight, and we're 
fine with doing that. I mean, we're, we're very appreciative of, of that, of the lease agreement. And um, I guess I'm just here to, to, to answer any questions and kind of tell us our timeline. We're, we're planning on starting in uh, August 5th is when they're going to start the, just the, the, the excavation. And then the total, the turf project will be done by the end of October and it'll be ready for play in, in the spring. And so, and, and I, as what I, as far as I know, I mean, to my understanding too, I think Major League Baseball is going to have a pretty, pretty big, you know, opening date, and they want to publicize and stuff too. So we, you know, you might see River Falls on ESPN and stuff like that too. So it's it's going to be kind of a big day in the spring of 2020 when when it all opens up. So I think we'll have we'll start it off with maybe a Challenger League game, then a youth game, and a softball game, and a fish game, and so we're going to kind of kind of do that. So so does anybody have any? Any questions or? I, I guess I've got a clarification here for the mayor. <coughs> this is an agenda item. Yeah. We're, Should we have that discussion yeah, now? We'll, 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 no, we can. When, when it comes up on the agenda, then you'll be here and they, we can ask you questions then. Is okay. That okay. Okay. Yep. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We, we will, right now, we'll wait till it comes up on the agenda. And okay. We'll, okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Greg. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Mayor, I have a public comment that I'd like to make. Yep. Um, I just want to encourage our utility director and city staff to reevaluate the lighting in the middle of our uh, downtown around the movie theater and where the crosswalks are. It's running a bit dark, and uh, it wouldn't take much to improve it. I think the Christmas lights kind of masked it, and uh, you can tell the kind of the trees kind of block it out a bit. So you, if you drive through at night, you'll you'll notice the area I'm talking about. It's not the whole street, but kind of the middle area of it. I appreciate it. Thank you. I would agree, okay. Sean. I've had a, a, a call on that as well, and I, I've kind of observed it myself. And just two things: one, I think two people do get used to the holiday lighting for about three months, and it's nice and bright. And those trees are really maturing and blocking out a lot of the lighting. So we will definitely look at that, Sean. Thank you. Okay, next, if I can have Mr. Ronsky meet me up at the podium, we're going to have a. I got a little something to say about Ray retiring tomorrow after 20 years with us. I have a prepared statement for you. But first, Reed, Reed, Reed's one of those guys that work at City Hall. He's got one of those jobs where absolutely every decision he makes and everything Reed does affects everybody in town. It affects everything we do. But usually, poor Reed, all he hears about his job is, you did this wrong or you did that wrong. They, I don't think people understand how big of a, of a deal everything he does was. But um, when I... Uh, I'm gonna tell my little story now. The first time I ever talked to Reed was long before I, I ran for mayor and I had called, I was just a citizen. I called and complained about my alley and I wanted to know why they weren't doing stuff to it. And Reed, Reed spent, oh man, it must've been half an hour, 45 minutes on the phone talking me in off the ledge and explaining to me why they do things the way they do and you know how this happens and all that stuff. And I, Reed, Reed actually kind of set the, the seed in my mind about getting involved with the city about because he made it you know I, I i was i i called up and i was just furious and it didn't make any sense to me why they did things the way they did but talking to reed really made me understand why they do things that way so reed kind of put that seed there so i don't know if i should apologize <laughs> to people for that so it's your fault <laughs> so yeah so like i said anyways reed's retiring tomorrow after 20 years of service for the city Reed started in 1984 when he graduated from the University of Minnesota with a degree in civil engineering. He has had both private and public sector experience working with rocket scientists. <laughs> he had, Reed actually, oops, sorry. Reed actually worked on spacecraft out in the West Coast. And uh, he worked on, he's worked on bridges, skyways, parking ramps, buildings, sanitary sewers, water mains, roadways, traffic, and stormwater management. Reed helped establish the city's progressive approach to stormwater management, earning recognition from the American Public Works Association in 2008 as Professional Manager of the Year in Water Resources. Reed's leadership has helped the city and university achieve their goals for the Cascade Avenue Reconstruction Project. The project was awarded the 2014 American Public Works Association Project of the Year for, tra for transportation project of less than five million dollars. I think we all know how well that turned out is phenomenal. Reed is well regarded in both 
the City Engineers Association of Minnesota, and the Minnesota Chapter of the American Public Works Association, and has served on several committees. In 2013, Reed was recognized by the City Engineers Association as the Municipal Engineer of the Year. In retirement, Reed and his wife Liz plan to move north, explore the community, explore the country in the winter ski and visit family and friends. Reed, I'd just like to thank you for all your countless and lasting contributions to the city on behalf of myself and the city council. Here's to a long and prosperous retirement. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks for having me. We will, we will have a retirement party for Reed tomorrow at 2 to 4 down here at the conference room downstairs. So please come and... Wish and congratulations. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Council Member Staff. Um, it's been a great 20 years. Again, I remember debating coming here. Um, let's, let's just say 20 years ago, not everybody was telling me to jump into it. Some people were cautioning me about River Falls, and I thought they had been through a few city engineers and a few city administrators in a pretty short period of time, and sometimes that creates kind of a poison environment for people to consider going. But uh, I jumped in, I thought uh, it could be part of something good, and it, it feels like it's turned out well. We had some great people to work with. We've accomplished some great things. I've worked with five different mayors. I've worked, uh, I've enjoyed every one of them. Uh, countless city council members from Beaner Fry to Gene Mulholland and Tom O'Connell to all you folks and even Mr. Cronk over here. And uh, enjoyed all of that too. So it's been a very good ride. I really thank you for uh, Wow, a great job, and everywhere I go with my colleagues that are in other cities, I brag about you folks and the fact that you let your professionals do their jobs here, and, and there's not a lot of second guessing, triple guessing, you know, throwing dirt, and it's been a joy from that respect, and I think we've all been treated with that respect, and it's... Uh, it's not, uh, it's not the way it is everywhere. So thank you very much for a great opportunity. Thanks, Reed. <laughs> okay. So next, we're going on to uh, uh, City Administrator Mr. Simpson is going to give us a, a little report on the strategic plan. One second, we'll get it loaded here. You don't want to do the rates or anything yet, right? So, well, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, I wanted to provide an update on the strategic plan and strategic initiatives. Um, we do a biannual strategic plan updates. There's a memo in your packet that um, provides kind of a status report on where we're at with the current current projects. Um, just as a little background, the most recent uh, strategic plan was adopted by the council on July 24th, 2018. And so since then, we've been kind of updating and evaluating how we do the administra administration's work plan um, and work plan items. And we're trying to get everything a little bit more um, coordinated and, and streamlined as part of the process. So this year, we're, <coughs> we're presenting what in the past has been the work plan. Um, as a strategic initiatives. It allows us to kind of have these as rolling um, initiatives. Um, as you know, many of them are multi-year um, initiatives, big projects for the community. We also identified within that uh, kind of a, a guide or a look ahead for council. So we have um, initiatives that we call um, the next initiatives. So those are things that the timing may not be right for us to do them right now, but we know the council's identified that or the communities identified them as things that they need to be done, and so we expect them to be on a very soon, either the, the next um, cycle or the one after that. We also have some developing um, initiatives, and those are initiatives um, that we think are not yet or emerging. They're coming up. They may be a na nationwide trend or something in the region, 
or something that we have in the community that's emerging as a, as a topic that would come up for an initiative. But they didn't quite make the cut of all the things that we have, we want to try to accomplish. Obviously, we have to make priorities. Um, so there is a list that we're kind of keeping track of that. And then in addition, each of the departments has several initiatives that they are accomplishing um, throughout the work plan. And so they, those may be more localized or um, what we consider more maintenance or routine items, but um, some of them are pretty large efforts like putting together a two-year budget, but that would be listed under a department initiative rather than um, in our big plan. So there's a little art, little science to how this list is put together. As you recall, we had a, a council retreat in April. Um, we charted and talked a lot about the direction. Um, the council, um, as Reed has mentioned, was very supportive, kind of looked at our list and said, whoa, that's a lot of stuff. Are you sure that we can get that all done and accomplish in a quality manner? Um, you got the two thumbs up for me, as usual, said, yeah, we, we can do it. Everybody wants to. We did take a look at the plan. Um, we're trying to look at workload across departments and within the organization and um, how it interrelates to public engagement because, frankly, there is a limit to the amount public can be engaged in. If we have a Kinney, Kinney Corridor plan going on, it's difficult for the same public to also participate in equal size planning events. So we're trying to spread those out over the years so that people have the opportunity to kind of hit these engagement as they go through. So the one primary change to what we had drafted originally and what now is in front of you for strategic initiatives is we're pulling a little bit back on the Man Valley um, planning efforts, doing more of the engineering or initial cursory steps. And the, plan, the big planning initiative that we expect to undertake in the next couple of years would be the downtown plan. So we, there was some debate at your, even at your workshop about can we really do both of those at once? Um, will we be distracted if we're trying to do Man Valley when we're also doing downtown? And, and after a lot of discussion, we decided that we really limit that initiative for this two-year period. So um, the uh, full report is on the city's website under work plans um, and listed by the strategic plan. Um, we still have seven projects that are in progress and continue beyond the July 30, uh, July, beyond today's date. Um, we completed a number of items on the last list of initiatives, um, including those listed here. Um, the time frame usually is a two-year time frame, July 1 to June 30th. In this case, it was July 1 of 17 through June 30th of 2019. There were 17 projects. We completed eight. Seven are still in progress. Um, and two of those have been carried on to the future um, initiatives list because they were more than the two-year period. Again, all of this is available for um, everybody to kind of take a look and track with us, and then we're providing biannual updates. So four times in the two-year period, you get updates from, from staff about where we're at. Um, the items that are still in progress are the streetlight utility, the 2025 org plan, public safety facilities, uh, cooperative boundary agreement uh, with Clifton, uh, comprehensive marketing plan for economic development. Um, the Kinney River Quarter plan development is essentially finishing up here as we um, get the plan published in that. And then phasing and implementation plan at Glen Park, you were able to see some of that um, today um, in progress, but obviously it's not, we don't consider it complete yet, so it's still on the uh, to-do list. Um, and then we are carrying forward the North Interceptor plan and the infill development. That's one that the council agreed. We kind of went from a wider infill development and we kind of narrowed it down to, okay, what infill development are we going to focus on for this period? And that was the campus quarter plan. So we do have, uh, this is kind of be our sixth major work plan um, that I'm aware of. As we talked about on April 12th, you looked at about 170 projects, of possible projects. Those are things that may have been derived from a recommendation in a previous plan, a council uh, member initiative, board or committee commission initiative, a citizen um, suggestion, um, or staff suggestion. <laughs> and then we, we are then really, you've given us the strategic plan and said you you staff need to focus on ensuring fiscal uh, financial stability 
those quality services, the vitality and connected community, um, that that is how we come up with which projects we're going to do. We need to make sure we're making um, effort in each of those. I talked a little bit about the different types of initiatives. Um, for the uh, in in your packet is a detail of each of the kind of the projects, what we expect the timeline to be. Um, ensuring financial stability, we've got the cost of electric rates, which you'll make some progress on this evening, um, and the 2021-26 CIP. For municipal services, I'm not going to read all of these, but you can see there's some pretty big uh, things like implementing the North Sewer Interceptor Plan, so that'd be actually building the sewer, uh, remodeling 2815 Prairie Drive for the police. There's also some uh, evaluative projects like the Biosolids Partnership. Um, economic Vitality, we're working very hard with the state of Wisconsin on the uh, jug handle ramp project. We'll be doing, like I said, just preliminary engineering design for Man Valley. That's basically siting um, lift stations and pipes and figuring mm -hmm. out pipe sizes for water, sewer. Um, and then we'll evaluate uh, and implement the campus corridor plan for infill development. So that's the four areas around the campus. Those will be coming to plan commission August, September. So some of these projects will be in the earlier part of the two years, and then some of these will take um, for the rest. And then we'll get going on a scope and timeline for the master plan of downtown. Uh, we will continue to assist UWRF with their science facility. Um, there's going to be a number of public uh, infrastructure needs for that facility and they did receive two million dollars in planning and design money so they'll be actually looking at how do you connect with the streets and the sewer and the electric and how does that work um, we will uh, finish up the 2019 citizen survey which um, will be done here in a month or so um, and then the outdoor recreation plan we uh, will be working on again if you have more like to have more information on that that's under um, rfcity.org work plans um, and I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have either about the progress on projects or on the proposed um, strategic initiatives. Anybody have questions for Scott? No? Thanks Scott. Thank you. Okay next move on to the consent agenda. Uh, we'll start uh, acknowledgement of the following minutes. Uh, the Historic Preservation Commission from 5-8 the Park and Rec Advisory Board from 619, the Bid Board from 611, the Utility Advisory Board from 617, the West Central Wisconsin Biosolids Facility Commission from 516, and the Powerful Choices Committee from 620. And then we have a resolution regarding property and casualty insurance renewal. This would be with um, travelers companies for 2019 and 2020. Uh, then we got a resolution accepting the 2018 audit report for their financial statements. Uh, next one is a resolution authorizing the 2019 CHIP SIL program. Um, the next one is a resolution regarding lease amendment with the River Falls Baseball Council. Uh, the next resolution is awarding the bid for the 2019 Mill and, Ever Mill and Overlay program, which would go to uh, Monarch Paving. Uh, next one is a resolution approving transportation project plat for a South 3565 jug handle project. Um, this would uh, resolution would authorize the city administrator to approve the transportation project plat. Uh, and then the 11 is a resolution approving appointment of the city engineer, uh, who would we would be appointing Krista Raleigh as our new city engineer for take over for Reed. Uh, 12 would be a resolution acknowledging the 2019-2021 strategic initiatives. Uh, next one would be a resolution regarding electric rate submittal to the Public Service Commission. Uh, this resolution would approve the submittal of an electric rate application to the Public Service Commission. Uh, this, would, this application is a possible rate adjustment in late 2020. Um, and the last one is a resolution to enter into assignment agreement with NCCM Global. This resolution would approve the assignment agreement for the transfer of property at, two, two, at 2555 Prairie Drive from Beulah LLC to NCCM Global LLC. This agreement is necessary to meet the requirements of Section 7.2 of the 2013 Development Agreement between the City of River Falls and Beulah. Does anybody want to poll anything? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to poll number eight. 
Anybody else? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull number 13. Anything else? Okay, I'll take a, a motion on the rest. Mayor, I make a motion we approve consent agenda items 4A through F, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 14. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next, uh, Mr. Gagne, you pulled number eight. Yeah, I'd just like to um, commend the baseball council for the job that you guys have done um, out at the uh, field out there. I think when we were originally going through this process um, to even implement um, a baseball field and the city's participation and wondering if it's going to flop in four or five years, um, I, I think this is kind of a reiteration of your commitment um, to the community and to that um, organization that you guys have out there um, and allowing other sports teams and the community to come together and actually use that facility and not just have it exclusively for your organization. That's, I think that's a fantastic use of space. Um, and, and like you said, um, you're going to get some publicity out of this and it just kind of gets that push behind it, re-energizes everybody and keeps that momentum going. So great job in acquiring that. Yeah, we, we appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Mayor, I move for approval of number eight. Oh, uh, hang on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, go ahead. I, I I've got, got first. Hang on. Yeah, oh, first. Yeah. Give me a second. second. I'll, I'll go second so we can okay. have a discussion. Uh, questions, comments? Yeah. Um, Greg, I've got a couple questions for you um, just, to, sure. just to review here real quick. Um, when, the, when the ballpark was originally built, I think there was some maybe some miscommunication about the parking situation out there. I just want to be clear that uh, you're going to address the handicap parking right now, and then you're going to work with the city long term when the jug handle stuff goes in yep and actually to find a solution for I, that yeah i apologize and i i read again congratulations and i wanted to be here to clap for him too and the the uh, point of beginnings engineer was on the phone and i was talking with amy earlier today and uh and i i think th there was some miscommunication but yes it, we we the handicap parking is definitely going to get done but it's not part of the this turf project like it, it will we'll do that Second. Okay, so the baseball association is going to or the baseball council is going to take care of the parking for that. Yes, the handicap okay. the handicap spot that's right next to the line the the concession stand. The okay. second question I've got is, the budget that I've been hearing, uh, and maybe you can clarify for me, is is a little over a million dollars for the turf. Is that, well, is that correct? It, it was, but it's we've there's been some. We we found out we had some really good news yesterday. Apparently, and I'm not a soil engineer, but apparently we have incredible um, blow count in our soil out there. That's what it's called. Congratulations. <laughs> and, uh, and, and and what that means is uh, that we don't have to take as much of it out and put more rock and more sand, which which brings the price up. So we had very good news yesterday, and um, basically it was to the tune of about a hundred and uh, four twenty eight thousand dollars is what it saved us. So. Uh, Given given the agreement that we've got in place and the and the guarantee the city's got issued for the for the loan right now that's that's outstanding, um, how much of a shortfall is there between the 850 and what you need to finish the project, and how are you going to address that? Zero. We're at, we're under it actually. You're under it. We're under it. And but and we've actually already, as of yesterday, we didn't know. I mean, we we were planning on it being more about 925. And uh, we had our, we've already sold and secured sponsorships for the added funds, and that's why we it was good news because we'll use those added funds to do the parking lot in a separate, you know, agenda item. I guess you know we'll have to have a separate permit for that or whatever. But not going to be a shortfall. You you're no, okay. No, not not at all. What we might we might actually have to we might actually be able to give some money back to Major League Baseball. Well, don't oh, do that. Don't give it well, back. I mean, <laughs> we have to you we have to you know use it for what you know. But I think we. Uh, but but yeah, we're it's it was it was a good good news yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Good. good. News. I, those are the two things I was most concerned about was just making sure that the money thing. Never heard of soil yeah. blow count in my life until yesterday. I'll go look it up after the meeting. Yeah. So. Okay. Any other questions? So I got a first and a second on the resolution regarding the lease amendment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And then number thirteen, Mr. Downey pulled. Resolution regarding electric rate submittal to Public Service Commission. Um, I watched the video online. I've been paying attention to this uh, conversation. It is a significant rate increase, and uh, it's justified. But I was just wondering if, uh, uh, Kevin, if you could just give us the uh, VIP summary of how we got to there. I know there's a lot to it. So. Sure, sure. Um, 
where I like to start is this. I'm, Julie promised to kick me if I'm going to go more than like 90 seconds. <laughs> um, I'm taking up time. So here's where I like to start. The last rate increase we had was a 4% rate increase in 2008. Prior to that, it was in 2001. So if you look ahead to next year, we will basically have had a 4% increase in River Falls in what be almost 20 years, two-thirds of a generation. That's a long time to hold rates solid. We had some good things happen over those years. We closed a power plant. We were getting some capacity payments. We were being efficient and able to keep our rates down. Our time has come. We've spent $7.2 million in infrastructure over the last three years on new substations, um, SCADA systems, metering systems, and it is time to, uh, to address the, the, the shortfall at this point and uh, time for a rate increase now. We also need to start thinking about rates and how we collect money from our customers to support our fixed costs in a different way. For 110 years, we, ba we based revenues on electricity usage. We encouraged electricity usage. We are moving in the other direction now where customers are using less energy. We're encouraging them, encouraging them to use less energy. And at some point, I'm guessing in the next 20 years, Sean, there'll be people with battery storage in their garage using half as much energy off the grid as they do today. So we think of terms of availability of electricity. So that's why we're moving a lot of our costs to the fixed monthly charge because we can't depend on usage anymore as a, as a strong revenue stream. So we're trying to collect our fixed costs off, off of, uh, for the, off the monthly charge. So that's why the monthly charge is going up <coughs> because usage is, we're encouraging to go down. Is the day uh, average, is that gonna be in the future looking at them? Um, in the future, I think you're gonna see fixed costs probably continue to rise as usage goes down. Um, let's, let's advance 30 years where everybody's got a solar panel, everybody has batteries in their house. You're only gonna need us three days a month but you're gonna be paying for the availability of that electricity. You're still gonna want that pole, that transformer, that wire. For the days you can't produce, you're gonna want it. And that's really, you're shifting to that mentality of you're paying for the availability of electricity. So I don't know if that helps or not, but it's a different, different paradigm. I mean, as we move forward in this era of declined usage. Yes. Kevin, what are the chances that PSC is just gonna accept this as, as um, as written, probably, probably not as written, hopefully close to as written, but usually there's some uh, corrections in, in this year-long process. So this isn't a done deal? Um, no, they'll come back most likely with something hopefully similar, but uh, okay. hopefully we don't get shocked by it, but this is going to be a pretty close guideline. We've justified the numbers. We feel confident with what we're proposing, but they will take a close look at it. There'll be a public hearing uh, with this, and... Um, We'll see. Hopefully we'll see. I think and, it, and it takes about 10 to 12 months. Sorry. I, I think from the utility um, uh, advisory board co conversation that took place, uh, I, I know I encourage staff to at least consider uh, a rate examination internally. Uh, WPPI helps us with that uh, at least every three years so that we don't have these big gaps anymore that, that kind of come at people in big waves. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd like to say I don't know that I want to make anything formal, but I think I'd encourage staff to. I'm in agreement with that, Scott. Do an every three-year assessment. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's fine where it's at that year, but I think we need to do that more frequently. Mm -hmm. So I'm just under understanding of the whole rate increase and mm -hmm. reassessment is it, we were paying uh, a rate to have the power, the poles, and all of that, but then my usage at my house was here, mm -hmm. and now because of energy efficiency, it's kind of stabilized, right. and we right. still have to pay for the service, right? right? And that's where that's coming from? Correct. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I move approval consent to agenda item 13. Second. Yep. We're ahead of first and second. All right. So I just need, is there any more questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next, we, will, we get to hear from Mr. Westhouse again. Kevin's going to give us a little presentation on resolution number 15 regarding the FERC study request and relicensing update. There it goes. Here we are. I think, I think we're at the right one, hydroelectric. So, Mayor, City Council, thank you for letting me take about four or five minutes here. I think I have about a dozen slides to go through. I want to give you a little bit of an update 
of where we're at with our hydroelectric relicensing process. Remember, a five-year process, probably five years in about eight months if you include the prep time we had to get to the initial uh, filing. So here we are tonight. Here's where we're at. Um, we're in year 2019. We started this about a year and a half ago. And last, about now, a week and a half ago, I think it was now, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission gave us our determination of what studies we have to do for this project. We had about a three-month process to determine our studies. We had two public hearings. We had some the uh, folks from D.C. came here and uh, listened to all the stakeholder groups. We had a list of about 40 uh, or so uh, proposals for studies, and we came up with our studies. We submitted them to FERC. They came back and said, yeah, we like the nine you submitted, but we added one. So uh, here's, here's the studies we're going to be doing. I'm just going to read them real quickly. Hydro hydrologic and hydraulic evaluation, a water quality study, Lake George shoreline habitat assessment, aquatic invasive species survey, wetland riparian and terrestrial resources survey, riparian habitat evaluation below Powell Falls, a recreation inventory and a recreation use assessment, cultural resources, we're gonna do an archeological resource survey and historic archeological resource survey. And then we've added a decommissioning plan because the council said we wanna decommission Powell Falls by 2026. So that's gonna be in there. So those are the nine we submitted. Those are the nine said, FERC said, yep, those are good. But they added one more, they added a muscle survey, uh, which they say is gonna be about $40,000. The muscle survey that they're requesting is the last 0.81 miles of the Kinnick River as it hits the St. Croix River, and then six miles down the St. Croix. Um, Scott and I have chatted, and we've chatted with our consultant. It's gonna be a tough battle with FERC to try to uh, challenge them on this. I think we're gonna, we're gonna do it as our intention, but not this year, and then maybe next year we can reevaluate where we're at and the things we learn between now and next year. Maybe next year have a better chance at maybe challenging this with a little more information. So total amount of studies requested, and these are estimates to do all these studies. You can see this is two years, 2019 and 2020. About $420,000 worth of mandated studies by FERC that are proposed to be done by early 2021. TRC Consulting and Leslie Brodkowski gave me a proposal to handle all of the studies and all their consulting works, work from this day forward to the end of, to, to the issuance of our license would be about $662,000. Here's some good news though. I'm going to, okay, so we give you the bad news first and then we're going to under promise, maybe an over deliver. We are working heavily with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineering. They have a, a, a program and we're hoping that they will cost share with us somewhere in the neighborhood of $115,000 to $200,000. I'm estimating on the low side that we're gonna get about $115,000 of assistance from the U.S. Army Corps. We're certainly gonna be working for more and it may be more. The program is called Planning Assistance to the States and we're working on that official agreement with them um, basically as we speak, kind of waiting to get through tonight, then fully engage them and uh, get going and hopefully yet this year start cost sharing on many of these studies. Every state has issued money by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineering and they're looking for projects and they do like our project. We've had several conversations with them. So here we go, here's the summary. Cost to relicense and decommission Powell Falls. The cost will be, this range is because I don't know if we're gonna get $115,000 of help up to $200,000 of help, but the range will be 462.5 to 547.5 to get us to the issued license. This is from this day forward. because I wanna remind people that we've already spent $158,000 with the first year or so with TRC Consulting to get us to where we are today. So the total price tag estimate for relicensing the project, decommissioning Powell Falls, with our, with our consulting work will be a little over $700,000. But that does subtract out the work th that the U.S. Army Corps is gonna help us with. Here's a reminder, I, we, I did some digging and thinking that maybe we had talked about this once and we we're throwing some numbers out and I can't believe it, but in 2015, we had a, a memo addressed to the mayor and the city council and we were projecting that relicensing might cost us $444,000. Now. If you add $120,000 for the decommissioning, you're at $564,000. And what did I say on these previous slides here? Let me go back. Um, 600, 600, never mind. I'm just telling you, 564, and if you subtract the 120 off the 705, 
we're about $20,000 off of where we guessed in 2015. I, I looked to where we are now and how we got these study numbers. That's pretty, pretty close guess. So I know it was an educated guess, right? We talked to our consultant. They'd been through these processes. I don't know if we kind of glossed that over at the time or not, but we said, hey, half a million dollars. And we all went, yeah, probably. So here we are today. The decommissioning plan, again, is $120,000 of the costs. Um, study requests may influence the amount of studies FERC requires on, license, on relicensing projects and study requirements vary community to community and river to river. We can find examples all over the country where the costs of studies for this type of projects vary. We have a very pristine river. It's a class A trout stream. We have a lot of stakeholders who are interested in this. So the river is different than the Fox River where you might not have nearly as many study requests. Um, RFU, RFMU is being required to complete about 25% of the studies that were requested by stakeholder groups. So, you know, small MAR stakeholder groups think we should have done more, we think we should do less, so, you know, and FERC says, nope, here's 10 you're going to do. Now we're getting to the silver lining. We do have something making money to pay for this. We have our hydroelectric production. Back in 2015 and 2016, we said, you know, when we made the decisions about, when, uh, Relicensing the project, decommissioning the lower, ending that in about 2026, running the upper. We just talk about generating revenue to take these dams out at some point in time, and this is what we're doing. At the end of 2018, the hydroelectric fund balance was 156,000. We'll have spent that down by the end of 2019 with the TRC consulting fees. And assuming a net hydro operations from the previous slide and this historically. We say about 75,000 a year net from these two hydros. And we have that times seven years. So you got 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. And then we end it. So seven years times 75,000 plus 156,000 fund balance, $681,000. So there's the story. The operations of the hydros may do what kind of what we thought when we decided to go ahead with this and keep them running was pay for the decommissioning and the eventual retirement of the, of the hydros. Estimated cost, 705,000. Potential revenues, just under 700,000. Again, those are gonna be very close. I put this slide in here last week. This is off our SCADA system. We can see exactly how much power is being generated on the left side that our city's using. Right here, we said almost 27 megawatts last Friday. But the one on the right is our hydro production. You can see right there, at this point in the last Friday afternoon, it was producing enough electricity for 301 homes, about 1.13% of our total production that day. So these things are producing. They're just not sitting in the river. They are producing, and they are going to help pay for this process. It's an expensive process. We own the hydros. We're required to relicense. FERC has mandated 10 studies. And we're in the, we're in the process that I think we have to do. And, and between the Kinney Corridor Committee Utility Advisory Board, I see Mark Spafford's here tonight from our Utility Advisory Board. Thanks, Mark, for coming tonight. Appreciate your support. And between this group here, we came to a resolution and a plan. The more I've thought about this, I think your plan is, very, is a very good plan. I was second-guessing myself, but the more I think about it, this was deliberate. It was a long process. These things are cranking out energy and paying for our federal license and eventual removal. Any questions, comments, concerns? Mr. Mayor. Yep. So, I mean, we, we've heard a lot of this um, from other folks that have come before us that we are producing quite a bit of electricity from our hydros. Um, they are operating at a net surplus mm -hmm. um, over and over and over. Obviously, there's swings and there's mm -hmm. differences based on weather and water flow and um, efficiencies. Um, one thing that I, I know that has been brought up that we haven't really talked a lot about is higher efficiency generators. I mean, we've got some pretty old generators and we've got some, some pretty old hydros. I'm kind of curious what the average, um, and, and if we were not saying we're doing mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. but how much more energy potential could we actually have just on the upper dam? Right. I think that, Chris, that was some of that discussion because that's where I was, you know, laying in bed second-guessing myself sometimes, like, gosh, maybe we should have kept them running. But we did have lengthy discussions. We brought information to the Utility Advisory Board when Diane was on there, too, about we recognize that Powell Falls, we had some, there's some seepage in the dams, the generators are getting old, the roof is leaking on the lower thing. So we're thinking, is that an investment we really want to make right now? 
And we really put that question out there. Do we want to generate more and keep these? Do we want to make that investment? I think through the 18-month process, we ran that all through the grinder, Chris, and we thought about it, and we came out with what we have. That was a route we could have taken, right, a, a year, year and a half ago. And I think as the community came together on a compromise, that, that just didn't end up being part of the compromise. Though definitely, you know, was one of the th pieces in the puzzle. But we said, you know, we're just not ready to make that investment. I think at some point in time, we would like to see a free-flowing river. Not everybody agreed with that, but many did. We came to uh, a compromise, and this is where we're at. But it's a good point. It was brought up, and we, we ran that through the grinder as well at the time. Reminder, how much uh, potential do we actually have with, if we say change the mind, it's not going to happen, but... Mm -hmm. How much potential is there with a new higher efficiency generator compared to the generators we have today? Well, you probably could get bigger pen stocks and new generators. I just, you know, it's all. So if you got 300 homes today, if we, in something equivalent to this across the country, yeah, I don't how know. many I, houses are they powering on something equivalent? Yeah, I'd have, I, I can't even really give you a, a, an accurate number on that, but it's, it's all a risk reward, right? I mean, if you'd want to invest $2 million, I'm sure you could crank out more energy but then you'd have to look at long-term investment and what the community wants. Mm -hmm. So it's all risk-reward. I was just curious. Yeah, you probably, the answer to it, maybe there's a short, accurate answer would be you probably could do it. I don't know how much money that would cost, but in the millions, I, I would guess. So. Mr. Mayor, I've got yep. some comments Questions? if I could. Yep. You know, we, we talked about this quite extensively at the Utility Advisory Board as well. Uh, I made some statements there, and I'll make them again tonight. Um, you know, we deliberately did a process in the city with the Kinney Corridor plan, the UAB, and then the city council. And we are, we have set a direction. We're moving in that direction. The dams are gonna come out right. in 26 and between 35 and 40, probably 38. Um, the studies are what they are. Uh, I was a little discouraged at the number of studies that were, dis were, that, that were requested by the stakeholders. Uh, it felt like piling on. Now, ultimately, at the end of the day, I think we got away with the studies that were the most uh, prudent to use, water quality. I don't think anybody here, myself included, it wants to see the river damaged or, or not taken care of. Um, there was a lot of discussion at the UAB meeting, and it'd be worth your time if you haven't had a chance to watch that. Um, I'm committed to the process. I hope the rest of the council remains committed to the process. Um, I think there's people who were unhappy on both sides the night that we passed the resolution, and that to me sounds like a good middle ground. It is time for the stakeholders to step up. This is $705,000 in total cost. We heard all along in this process that there is money out there. We have money. We want you to do this. We want you to do these studies. There is all this, the, all this talk. This is the first step. I, I think we still have some work with the DNR that we probably have to do. They might require some studies. I don't know that for sure yet, but that's what I'm hearing. There's more to come. It's time for the stakeholders to step up and, and make some contributions towards these costs. This is falling directly on the ratepayers of the City of River Falls, and I want to be clear about that. I, I, don't, I don't make this uh, decision or vote lightly knowing that this is going to be an impact on the ratepayers. We've got a way to pay for it. And that, my second comment is, you, if you were not a damn fan right now, you better be, because that's the only way these things are going to get paid for to come out long term. So, you know, we have to have these dams generating power uh, in order to pay for, as, re, or as Kevin just uh, laid out, to pay for these things long term. So I guess that was my comments, and, and um, you know, let's move forward. I think the muscle study is ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, I don't think there's any way we're going to solve that one. I don't want to pay for somebody else's muscle study seven miles downstream or whatever it is. It doesn't seem to be any bearing on us. Um, but that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But that's not, that's not anybody's fault. Thank you. Anybody else? I'll make a comment. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't know that I have it here in front of me, but the muscle study was proposed by the DNR it was yes not yes. the local stakeholders yeah. so no I would agree I'm sorry no, I didn't them. I didn't yep. clear I didn't clarify <clears throat> that yeah. um, and um, there 
I agree with what you said for the most part. Uh, I think that we have uh, made a compromise and I am behind that compromise. Um, and I, I, I will continue to support that moving forward um, and I hope everybody else does as well. Um, the studies are the cost of doing business for relicensing the dams. And if we had decided not to relicense, to surrender the license, we wouldn't be doing these studies. So I just, you know, throw that out there as that was a, um, a discussion that went through the grinder, just as Kevin said, uh, along with other options that were, um, that were also brought forward. So here we are, when you make a compromise, guess what? This was an expensive compromise, folks, and that's where we stand today. So we're gonna keep moving forward. Um, fortunately, yeah, you know, we built in or the, the dams will continue to produce um, some energy and some money and we'll, uh, we'll use that money to help pay for the relicensing of the dams so that they can continue uh, to be used. You know, I mean, honestly, it's kind of like we're on a treadmill here at this point and we're not really going anywhere. But you know, that's, the way it, that's the way it goes when the sausage gets made. Sometimes this is the way it looks, and <laughs> it's the way it happened this time. Anybody else? Dan, can I just yeah. make one clarification, too? Just so this, this is for the FERC Hydro Relicensing with TRC Consulting. One thing that's not included here is that we don't know the unknown yet is the DNR water certification. So that will be something that we'll find out in probably 18 months to two years, what they're going to require for the state level for to get the water certification that's part of the relicensing process. So hopefully we get to that far down the road, we'll have made a better relationship with the Army Corps and hopefully we can find, find ways. So okay. just wanted to put that out there. Thanks, Kevin. Mm -hmm. With that, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve the resolution regarding the FERC study request and relicensing update. Second. Questions or comments? Mr. Mayor, can I just, just to clarify, so, um, you may say, well, why are we, you know, if we have to do this, then why, you know, what is it, do we have a choice? So the answer is you do. Um, you have a choice in the way that you implement. So I just want to be clear. The staff is suggesting that you authorize the city administrator to basically parse and parcel through these study requests, work with a consultant, identify what firm or whether it would be the university students or whether it would be the Army Corps of Engineers staff, essentially this path forward is suggesting that we kind of gave you the big picture this is how much it could cost us this is how much we think it's going to cost us to get this done but that is relying on you know an implementation strategy that allows the city administrator to work directly with Kevin and with TRC and all the stakeholder um, uh, stakeholders and consultants and other people to kind of pick the the best, most efficient way forward. So by 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 approving this resolution, you're removing from the council's, um, you're, you're not r removing your authority because you're, you're vesting your authority in the city administrator, but you're not getting a study by study, proposal by proposal um, approval process of each and every one. Now under our current um, purchasing process there's several of these studies that I would we would have done internally anyways it wouldn't have met the threshold for council but certainly if anything 50,000 and over would come to the council so I just want to be clear that you know, I appreciate it we're prepared to take that responsibility on we're recommending it and think it's yeah. the best way forward but the alternative to the alternative is we're is not we're not doing any studies the alternative is staff we want you to implement the FERC mandated studies under the normal purchasing process meaning um, we've got the budget and we'll set you know you, you have to come back every time we have a study and get it approved by by the council so that's a possible thing you could do we don't think it makes a lot of sense um, for the process for the and frankly FERC for all of its um, bureaucratic process. Um, they're asking us to get some of these studies done very, very rapidly. So it's, it's um, going to be phoning a friend, so to speak, with consultants to say, do you have somebody that can get a, in a boat in 
August. Do you have somebody that can get in a boat in August um, to get some of these studies done in the in the interim? Now, a lot of these studies, we have lots of time. We'll do, we'll be able to do multiple quotes, um, do some of our normal purchase order process and that. But I, I just want to make it clear that we're kind of looking at this five hundred and you know fifty thousand um, dollars to get this done, and we'll do the best we can. And obviously, provide updates to both. And I believe the UAB asked at their meeting that they want monthly updates on this, so we'll pass those along to council too. But appreciate your confidence. Um, if you choose not to do it this way, that's your prerogative, and we won't take offense. But the alternative to what we proposed is that any studies that hit um, the thresholds in our purchasing uh, process would then need to come back to council. Um, and because of the two week, um, every two week, council meeting process and some of those things um, it, it's likely to delay or add cost to the studies no I, th I think we're pretty confident you guys no sense slowing it down by us doing it I mr. mayor mm -hmm. I'd agree with Hal kind of the way he coined it is it is the cost of doing business and unfortunately there's some studies in there that in, in my opinion that are kind of ridiculous and should be passed on pass the buck on to the person that should be doing those studies um, but I, I, I would just ask that um, in our monthly one-on-ones, um, we obviously talk about a lot of these key topics. I think um, as we go along this process that that would be one of those things that stays on those one-on-ones so we can stay on top of that topic with you and not have to come engage you, that that would be something that you bring up to us as it's an ongoing process. So I'm in favor of it. Anybody else have anything to say? Do we have a response? Um, the FERC is in the FERC determination letter. They're suggesting that we could do that in 2019. Um, we've budgeted. We intend to do it. Um, we're not sure we can get it done in 2019 based on the order. But um, so that the timeline in the initial determination is that they they FERC has requested us to do it um, in this season, the 20 the first study season. We'll have to make an effort, a, a real effort, to do what FERC asked us to do. So I don't want to give people the impression that we've, we're intending to to blow off FERC. That's that's not really an option. No. Um, we have to have a really good reason not to do what's prescribed by FERC. In fact, we recall this is. 99% the city's study plan, right? So we listed out what studies we're going to do and how we're going to do them and what timing we're going to use. So the muscle study is the exception to that. That was added at the request um, of a, a stakeholder and uh, an agency. And then there's a FERC determination of when it was. So we can respond to that. We can appeal it. We can do all kinds of things, but that's not our that's not our plan. Our plan is to try to get it done um, unless we can identify during the course of our other studies a reason why we shouldn't do it. And then we would let FERC know that. Do we have a timeline on the appeal? Um, I don't know the appeal timeline offhand, but I know that we don't think it would be a good effort. Yeah, I'm not suggesting that we go that route. I'm just kind of curious what the timeline is if we're going along with studies. If yeah. something comes up where we say, eh, maybe that's not it because we've kind of touched on that in this study, um, kind of moves it around. There's timing in the, in the timeline that was provided um, in, in a previous agenda item and also in the PowerPoint tonight. It kind of on, it, we've got a study um, period one of year one study period. Now we have to report back to FERC and we have to make any adjustments or talk to them about adjustments and then the study period two. Mm -hmm. and then we kind of repeat that process. So there are prescribed dates for those interactions. Anybody else? Okay, we got a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next move on to uh, administrator's report. Uh, anybody got anything for Scott or Scott, you got anything for us? Um, I'm glad that council, those of you who were able to attend, uh, could take a look at the progress in Glen Park. I guess the point we'd like to make to the public is as nice as it looks and as close as it looks to done, we still have a lot of work to do. So we're still asking the public to to limit their 
um, use of those area, areas of Glen Park um, in and around construction. I know it's very difficult. Um, everybody has good ownership of the parks in this community, so we all feel like it's our park, which is good. We want to see what's going on, but um, there's still quite a bit of work to be done uh, in the park, so we want to make sure we're giving the construction crews the opportunity to do that. And also, if we want to get back into the park next year and have the park be our park as we remember it or, or better, we want to make sure we get some time to do the restoration work, the final grading, the seeding, the other things that need to be done too. So the more feet that are in the park, the worse off we'll be for getting us back into shape um, for that. So obviously there's use of the bridge. There's some fenced areas where you can get in and around for joggers, walkers, et cetera. But um, the park proper, so to speak, we just really would like people to avoid um, just avoid it. That would be best for us to get the project done as, as uh, safely and quickly as possible. And we we are not likely to take any reservations for the, the pavilion this year. So um, 20, uh, 2020 is when you should be thinking about your reservations for the pavilion. Anything, anybody got anything for Scott? Just, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sean. Scott, could you talk about the uh, 2019 Momentum West Housing Conference. I plan on going to affordable for affordable housing, but uh, could you just talk about it real quick? Um, real quick is about all I can talk about it. Momentum West, which is a regional, 13-county uh, um, regional economic development group, is putting on a housing conference, um, and so we'll have a staff member and a council member that'll be able to attend, and they'll bring together various folks to talk about um, housing strategies in our region. So it, it's a pretty it's a smorgasbord of topics. So um, if uh, any of the other council members are interested in attending, we um, it's a pretty affordable uh, um, conference. And I think I probably mentioned it in a tiny paragraph months ago. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's OK. I just want to, I um, uh, should have done this during public comment, but I want to recognize uh, two of our municipal employee um, uh, utility workers who uh, were, who went to help the, um, the areas up north that, uh, that experienced the tornadoes over the weekend. Help me, Kevin. Dan Trichel was one of them, and Tim Wistie was the other. Wistie. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we have uh, mutual aid agreements uh, all over the state and national, for that matter. Uh, so if we were to have a problem like that, we could call on mutual aid. In this case, uh, we sent some folks out to help up there. So uh, recognition for those uh, for those two who went above and beyond and went up and helped get the power back on. I think they're still struggling with power up there. So furthermore, we have two more linemen, Luke Bauman and Logan Snyder, who are in Wisconsin Rapids helping them restore power too. Oh. That they just went, uh, I think, early this morning. So they have over 100 poles that snapped off. Wow. That's great we can do that. Okay, anybody else got anything? Otherwise, we'll move on to Comptroller's report. Uh, this is the Comptroller's report for June 2019. General fund revenues through the first half of the year were $4,777,323, or 44% of revenues. Revenues in the month of June included $15,207 in DOT transportation state aid for a taxi service and $20,879 in building permit fees, which is comparable to last year. Expenditures for the same period were $4,598,885, or 42% of expenses, for a net of revenues over expenditures of $178,438. Move. Hang on one second. I just got a couple of things to re I just want to recognize. First, I want to recognize uh, the River Falls Municipal Utilities they received a safety award from the mini, mini, ugh, Municipal Electric Utilities of Wisconsin. And the award was for safety achievements. But what I really liked was uh, his name was Mike Zupricno. He was the he's the manager of the service of the safety service for MEUW. <coughs> and his quote was, it is easy to use incidents and injuries to measure safety. However, these metri these metrics focus on lagging indicators, which mean it's too late after it happens. The, ME, the MEUW awards are designed to highlight the proactive steps 
our member utilities are taking to create strong safety culture. And not only our utility, but all of our, all of our services, whether it's police, fire, utilities, I greatly appreciate all the time and effort they put into taking care of safety and making sure they're safe when they go out in the fields and do that. So I think this was something that was wonderful for them to get acknowledged for everything they do. And uh, the only other thing I wanted to say was it was great to see uh, so many people turn out last week when the National Guard left for overseas for a year. And I just wanted to let everybody know to keep them in your prayers and your thoughts for the next year and hope they all return safe. That was it. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.